Dear students, I am Professor Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and I am discussing in this particular session with you excretory products and their elimination. Before I go into details, I would like you to know that whatever food we eat is finally converted into several components. Some are required by the body and some are to be thrown out. Some are toxic and some are not toxic. We take oxygen, we have to give out carbon dioxide. So, elimination of excretory product is very, very important. And how that is happening in our body, that is the aim of this session to make you understand. Substances which should be removed either totally or partially from the body can be listed like ammonia, urea, uric acid, carbon dioxide, water, you may say why water? You can have water only in optimum quantity. You know that your body fluid is 0.9 percent. That means you can have water only in relation to sodium in such a way so that your body fluid is 0.9 percent extra sodium has to go out and extra water also has to go out. You cannot disturb the concentration of your body fluid which should be 0.9 percent all the time. So, extra water is also to be given out. Then certain ions which we need also like sodium, potassium, chloride, phosphate, sulphate, we need them. But if they are in excess, they are also to be removed. So, you should understand that what we have to remove from our body, what should be removed? Anything which is toxic should be removed, anything which is unwanted by the body should be removed and anything which is surplus or which is extra, we want it, we need it, but it is surplus, then that surplus amount should be removed. Now that work is done by our body, try to appreciate what a machine our body is, is able to regulate and find out how much is extra and how much should go out. And for that, we have beautiful system built in in our body. Before I go into the detail of the system, I would like you to know that in the process of evolution, when from amoeba, multicellular and then fishes and then amphibians and then reptiles, birds and mammals are formed in this order. then our excretory system has also taken so many turns. Fishes which normally give out excretory matter in the form of ammonia, highly, highly toxic substance. You can't keep ammonia in your body even for a fraction of a second. In our case, ammonia is not the excretory product. But in case of fishes, it is. But since they live in water, the moment ammonia is produced as excretory product, it is washed off. And these animals will be called ammonotelic, producing ammonia as excretory matter. Good examples are bony fishes, aquatic amphibians. Why aquatic? Because ammonia being toxic should be washed off immediately. So only aquatic animals can afford to have it. And the category is ureotelic, where the excretory product is urea. Examples are human, mammals and terrestrial amphibians. Now, this urea is lost with little water or little fluid like our urine. And the category is uricotelic where excretory product is uric acid. And it is accompanied by least wastage of water. Please try to appreciate we have to retain water as much required by the body. We can't afford to lose more than that, otherwise one goes into dehydration. Now, suppose to some animals, water is not easily and freely available, then they have to save water. So, they have to excrete out 
without losing much of water and that is uricotelic where excreted matter goes in the form of uric acid with very little loss of water and good examples are reptiles and birds. Birds excreta you must have seen it comes as some black particle and on the top of that one yellow particle. That black particle is feces and that yellow particle is urine a solid urine a crystal the uric acid crystal. So no loss of water has taken place. So we have understood that in terms of excretory matter we are giving out there can be aminotelic, ureotelic and uricotelic. Let us now understand human excretory system. You can see in the slide there are two kidneys. What is the role of kidney? Its main role we can say in two points. First to remove toxic substances and remove extra substances and second to maintain acid base balance and also to maintain our body fluid at 0.9 percent. So kidneys have very great role to play and it is important for us to keep our kidneys healthy. Both the kidneys are located in the abdomen just after the last rib they are being shaped and from each kidney comes out one ureter and both the ureters reach down to the urinary bladder where they end and urinary bladder opens to exterior by urinary opening through which the urine will flow out. This is the external features of the excretory system two kidneys, two ureters, one urinary bladder. Then these kidneys are supplied blood by renal artery and the renal vein will drain of the blood. Kidney is highly supplied by blood. It is highly vascularized and that is why it looks so red. Now we are discussing the longitudinal section of kidney to know the internal structures. At this point it is important for me to tell you that the smallest functional structural unit of kidney is nephron which is also known as uriniferous tubule. Each nephron does the full work of kidney. In each kidney there are millions of nephrons. All are functional but if one tenth of one kidney is working we will have normal life. We have extra kidney tissue in our body. In our body we have everything little extra so that machine goes on and that is the reason why if one kidney is damaged the person won't come to know about it because other kidney will be little enlarged and will take over the function of first kidney also. Only when second kidney is 90 percent damaged then the person comes to know that kidney is damaged and then it becomes difficult to correct it. So kidney is very delicate organ and we have to take extra care to maintain our kidney. Inside the kidney you can see there is outer cortex and inner medulla. The nephron which has glomerulus and the tubule these two parts the glomerulus is always in cortex and loop of Henle is always in medulla. What I am trying to say that some nephrons are lying quite at the periphery of the cortex and their loop of Henle is just dipping into the medulla whereas other nephrons are lying close to the medulla but in the cortex and their loop of Henle is dipping deep into the medulla. So the one in which it is dipping deep into the medulla will be called juxtamedullary nephron juxta means close 
to medulla and the other one will be called cortical nephrons. These position significance I will explain when I discuss counter current mechanism in the following episodes. So, in the longitudinal section you can see the cortex, the medulla and so many nephrons will join together and make one common duct and there will be some 12 to 14 or 15 such ducts which will end on the pelvis of the kidney and from pelvis of the kidney will come out the ureter. Here I am showing you the detailed structure of nephron. You can see glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. Bowman's capsule is a cup shaped structure in which is dipping a bunch of capillary called glomerulus. The artery which is entering is afferent and the one which is coming out is efferent. The diameter of afferent is bigger than diameter of efferent. It has some significance at the time of filtration. After Bowman's capsule, you can see proximal convoluted tubule, then loop of Henle, then distal convoluted tubule, and then the collecting duct, which is coming down again to end on to the pelvis. This is one nephron. Like this, you have millions of nephrons in your kidney. This collecting duct, one collecting duct will cater to many tubules so that at pelvis you have only few channels. So, nephron functioning, the glomerular functioning becomes very important. I am showing you in this slide Malpighian body. There are overlapping terms. The cup shaped structure is Bowman's capsule. The glomeruli is a bunch of capillaries. You can see bigger diameter efferent and a smaller diameter efferent. These two things together can be called renal capsule. That means Bowman's capsule and glomerulus together can be called renal capsule or it can also be called Malpighian body. There are so many Malpighian bodies in the kidney and these are the sites for filtration which is the first step in kidney functioning and if this glomerulus is not working properly then whole idea of kidney functioning disappears and that is what happens in renal disorders. And when filtration takes place the filtrate comes into the cup and from cup it goes to the tubule. Proximal tubule has some well defined role to play. Then it comes to loop of Henle which is definitely dipping into the medulla of kidney which again has its role in counter current mechanism. Then the same filtrate will move to distal tubule where some reabsorption will take place. And then it comes to collecting duct, the filtrate, so far we are calling it filtrate not urine. And then it will be acted upon by hormones aldosterone and ADH from posterior pituitary. And these hormones will do the photo finish to reabsorb sodium or water and after this the filtrate is converted to urine. The point where two hormones aldosterone and ADH act that will do photo finish of filtrate. Now this filtrate will not change in any way and now it will be called urine. This is a point where the processing of filtrate finishes and urine is formed and now this urine will be given out uh, through urinary opening carrying with it toxins, surplus of any substance and a little water which was extra in the body after making body fluid 0.9 percent. With this we come to the end of this session. Thank you. Thank you.